One question that's often being asked is how they discover new planets, especially those orbiting stars so far away. Well, there have been several methods at locating planets, moons and asteroids in our own solar system, but not all of these are helpful in looking at planets orbiting other stars. One factor is that anything the size of an asteroid or even larger exerts a significant gravitational pull on things nearby. By watching how other nearby objects move, you can predict the presence of another body. The problem is that the further something is away from that other body, the less noticeable the gravitational effect becomes. And of course, the smaller the object, the less gravitational force it exerts on that other body. Also, it doesn't tell you exactly where something is, only the most likely area to look for it. But it can also create a Doppler shift in a star, or it can create a slight wobble in the orbit of a star, so it's useful in looking for planets orbiting other stars. The other way is looking for light or some other electromagnetic waves to be reflected off the surface of a planetary body and back to a telescope on Earth or orbiting Earth. This again has some problems. Firstly, the body's distance from our Sun to the body in our solar system may mean that very little light actually reaches it in the first place. Then the surface might not be that reflective, so even light, less light is emitted from the body and goes back into space. And finally, the distance from the body to Earth may mean that some objects are almost invisible. Now, whilst planets in another system might be closer to their parent star, the light would also have to travel a great deal further and also may be drowned out by the light of the star itself. So rather than looking for the presence of something when searching for planets orbiting other stars, some astronomers are looking for the absence of something. The majority of main sequence stars put out a rather predictable electromagnetic radiation, so any changes in the level of that radiation can be fairly easily noticed and measured. Now sometimes this change is due to solar storms and similar events, however if whilst observing a star, a planet passes between the star and the, the Earth or a telescope in orbit around the Earth, the brightness of the star will diminish slightly. The larger the planet is, the greater the reduction in brightness will be, as a large planet will create more of a shadow than a small one. Once a decrease has been noticed, and if other factors can be eliminated, other things about the planet can be begin to be deduced. How long the reduction goes on for can give more clues about the distance from the star. Again, its size, since it's related to how long it takes the shadow of the planet to cross the face of the star. However, this first reduction in brightness is only the initial step. The next part is to predict from the size and orbital period the next time the planet will pass in front of the star. If the planet reappears for a second or third time, as predicted, in combination with more accurate measurements of the apparent change in the brightness of the star, the planet's size, its orbital period, distance from the star can all be deduced. With knowing how hot the star is, you can then make an assessment as to if the planet could possibly be in a zone to support life as we know it. For instance, could it have liquid water? Could it have an atmosphere? Now there are other ways of identifying planets around other stars or finding out about a previously identified planet, but they're fraught with difficulty. Something called gravitational microlensing is possible, where a planet will slightly bend the light of a distant star. The effect is really only noticeable for massive planets, and it's different to differentiate between other effects. However, direct observation is also possible of the image of a planet by masking the direct light from the star or using interference patterns to remove the direct light from the star from an image. This has the advantage of making it possible to get an idea of the substance of the planet by the types of the light that's actually reflected from the surface. But again, the further away the star is, the more difficult this becomes. The search for exoplanets is still in its infancy. These techniques are only going to improve with time.